In recent news, Drake has been crowned the most streamed artist of the decade on Spotify, but I'm not surprised. He's a celeb that almost everyone seems to love along with all of his music. Born Aubrey Drake Graham back in the 80s, Drake is 33 at the time of this recording. The man may be in his 30s, but it doesn't seem like he's going to settle down anytime soon. When you see Drake's mansions, you'll really understand. Playa. Drake was in the showbiz forever, but through the past decade, he's really reached the height of his fame. I mean, yeah, he played Jimmy and Degrassi for years, but I'd say he's best known as one of the biggest hip-hop artists these days. The 28 billion streams he's compiled over on Spotify confirm it. And of course, Drake hails from the six, which everyone knows. Drake is a Canadian rapper, singer, songwriter, actor, a businessman, and more. And on Instagram at the time of this recording, Champagne Poppy has 61.9 million followers. Aside from all the Grammy Awards, American Music Awards, and other awards, Drake has a number of great successes under his belt. Billboard even named Drake the 16th most successful artist of all time, and the rapper founded his own record label, OVO Sound, in 2012 as well. Aside from music, Drake has other business ventures such as his Whiskey Virginia Black and his October's very own, or OVO, clothing shops. Not to mention, Drake continues to show pride for his hometown. And being the dedicated fan of the Toronto Raptors that he is, he was also announced as the team's global ambassador, whatever that is. Drake has his own members-only bar and lounge in the Air Canada Centre where the Raptors play their home games and it costs 7 k a year to be a part of it. Even if you cough up the cash, apparently it's also invite only or you need to be approved first. Better believe this place is bougie, I've seen it myself. But that's not the only spot Drake owns in Toronto. With an estimated net worth of 150 mil and being the fifth richest rapper in the entire world, the man has outdone himself with some of his real estate. Clearly, he can afford it. Hey guys, it's Kara, and today we're doing another house tour here on Famous Entertainment. We're gonna look at Drake's impressive real estate portfolio in both Toronto and LA, including his hometown mega mansion, his Hidden Hills estate, made up of three separate properties, and more. If you like these videos, make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell to be notified when we post so you can always be up to date. We've also done house tours on the likes of Will Smith and fellow Toronto man The Weeknd, and we'll have links to those at the end of this. Be sure to follow me on Instagram because I love connecting with you guys. I've also been reading all your comments and I'm gonna be responding to some at the end of this. I need you to let me know who to do next in the comments down below and whose home you'd like to see. Now let's get into this video. Before we look at Drake's life of luxury, let's get a little background. So we know the started from the bottom singer didn't appear to actually start from the bottom, but he really did come a long way. Like I mentioned, Drake is from Toronto, Ontario, and most of his early life was spent growing up in the neighborhood of Forest Hill. Forest Hill is known to be a wealthy area of Toronto, so of course many fans assume Drake had it easy. I too live in Toronto, and I know that only rich people really live in that area. Drake denies he was well off back then, and explained that his family only lived there because his mom was living beyond her means, and they rented a basement and first floor of a house. Drake said, I grew up with a mom who was deep in debt because she wanted the best for her family. As a teen, Drake even gave a tour of his home. The home seems pretty modest to me. Me and my grandma have a little thing where my mom doesn't let her eat chocolate, but uh, my, my grandma slides me a little extra cheddar on the side and uh, I make sure she gets her, her daily chocolate dose. That's so. my grandson. Um, this is the living room and it's nice and elegant and I kind of leave this alone. It's too, too, too much for me. This is our dining room and uh, here's my mother making notes as usual on probably some Exposing my to-do list. Yeah, exactly. Seems like Drake had the basement all to himself, so at least he had his own space to hang out and do his music stuff. This is my space. This is where I live. And through here, this is my living room. I like a chilling vibe. That's my favorite thing about this, this basement. I wonder if Drake knew back when he was filming this vid where he would be now. Boy, have times changed. And then through here, this is the, this is my comfort area. As you can see, I recently did laundry. This is actually a very nice couch. And in here, I have more stuff. Some sweaters and t-shirts, some blazers, jackets, and the shoes are a big thing. I got them from, from bottom to top. Fast forward to current times where Drake is sitting on a fortune and he's definitely changed the way he's living since that teenage hangout. 
onto Drake's real estate starting with his homes in the Hidden Hills, California. He actually purchased three separate properties here that make up a combined 6.7 acres, the main house being called the YOLO Estate. The gated community of Hidden Hills is notorious for housing the biggest and richest celebrities like the Kardashian-Jenner clan and more. This neighborhood is next to Calabasas, LA, and to afford anything in this hood, you need multi-millions of dollars. Drake's pool in the main house was designed to outdo the grotto at the Playboy Mansion, and it's supposed to be one of the most luxurious pools in the world. Usually in the grotto, it's like against the law to have a bikini on. You, you have to go naked. You have to go naked. I mean, the first time we went in, we had bikinis on, and we were like, screw this, took it off. And, and never wore one since. But we'll see more of that soon. The latest add-on to Drake's YOLO estate was actually a fixer-upper home. It's definitely not the same vibe as the other two, but it adds more acres to his Hidden Hills real estate. Drake purchased this ranch-style home for $4.5 million back in 2018. I'm sure since he bought it, they've renovated or are still in the process because it looked pretty old school like you can see in the pics. This house is 2,449 square feet inside and has three beds and two and a half baths spread across one level. When Drake bought it, the mid-1950s house had exposed brick and beams and what looked like outdated appliances in the kitchen. Moving outside the home, although there's no Playboy Mansion pool, there is a lot of greenery including redwood trees and fruit trees. Still a nice property, that's for sure. Drake also bought the home next door to his main house as an add-on back in 2016. This spot was the cheapest of the three, coming in at $2.85 million. Another 1950s style ranch house, this one is 4,445 square feet with four bedrooms and five baths and also came with an 800 square foot attached guest house. Although it costs less than the one I just showed you, it's bigger and this one actually had a pool. This house is cute and charming and was obviously a good business investment for Drake since it neighbors the main mansion. It's pretty open concept with hardwood floors and high ceilings. Also looking at the pics, you can tell it wasn't as outdated as the other one he just bought. Now we've seen Drake's two add-on properties in Hidden Hills, so it's time to look at the main one, the YOLO estate. His house was actually listed for sale back in 2017, but I'm not sure if he actually ended up selling. Either way, Drake did list it for 20 mil. Drake purchased this mega mansion back in 2012 from Saddle Ranch owner Larry Pollock for almost 8 million. Apparently, Drake first fell in love with the pool at this house. He had a little bit of a pool obsession and used to Google crazy residential pools before he was even signed. Back in 2007, he found this place online and like I said, the pool was created to put the Playboy Mansion's infamous grotto to shame. Drake said, This house was the desktop image on my computer years before I bought it. The YOLO estate is 12,500 square feet and has 6 beds and 10 baths. Aside from all of the indoor living space, it also sits on plenty of land, 2.91 acres to be exact. Drake's Hidden Hills main mansion is also special because he spent four years reconstructing it to be his masterpiece. There are a ton of epic features inside the home, like a gorgeous library, games room, massive wine cellar, fitness center, spa and massage room, and 25-seat movie theater. Drake's master suite is also fit for a king, and he told Rolling Stone that when he has female visitors, he delights in flipping a switch beside the bookshelf, which swings open to reveal his bedroom. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I swear to God, that never happens. <laughs> Moving outside, there's that dream pool with a swim in grotto, waterfalls, wet bar, TVs, and an 80-foot slide. Other fun stuff Drake has out there includes a tennis court, a basketball and volleyball courts, viewing pavilions, and horse stalls. Although Drake has no horses that we know of. There's even a mechanical bull. I mean, what more could you ask for? I bet he's thrown some wild parties. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's One Direction. <laughs> Looking at Drake's Hidden Hills estate, you can tell it's fit for a king, but that's not all the man owns. Aside from all that real estate in the hills, Drake also has places in the Great White North of Toronto, which is definitely his true home. I'll show you his palace in just a sec, but first we know he had a temporary spot while that home was being constructed. Drake had a condo in the upscale Ritz-Carlton, which is in the heart of downtown Toronto. He even had perfect views of the famous CN Tower right from his bedroom window. Drake showed off this place on his Instagram a couple years back when he was living there and it apparently cost him 20 grand a month. Although it didn't have much furniture yet, you could see how the fancy spot was being set up and of course, Drake had his own studio in there too. He said in the video, You know, sometimes when you're out here on the road, you forget the importance of having a home. 
I just came home to a new temporary spot till my house is built, but it's my home for now and I'm very inspired, very excited, you know? This just has me ready, you know, ready to work. You know? Finally, I've saved Drake's epic Toronto mansion for last. He bought the land for this mega home back in 2016 for 4.4 million and was working on building it for years. Only recently this year was it finally finished. It's in the Bridal Path neighborhood of Toronto, which is one of the only areas in the city where you'll find such large plots of land. There are only a few mega mansions in this area because they occupy all the property, so at least Drake has some privacy. But he did have to add extra high fences and actually get the city's approval to do so, just to make sure nobody's sneaking in. Some may say that Drake's Toronto Palace is slightly over the top, but I can't say expected much less. Apparently, the mansion is 40,000 square feet and walking in it opens up to a two-story hallway. There are double height walls, a party area and much more on the main floor. The master suite has its own wing in the house and there's even a guest wing. Drake's private bedroom wing includes a spa bathroom with a ginormous steam shower, two dressing rooms and a private terrace. The house was designed by the architect Ferris Rafali, who's actually behind Drake's share club. Drake's mansion also includes plenty of guest rooms, a private movie theater, a gym, a snack room, a music lounge for at-home concerts, and more. Not to mention Drake has a toilet that plays relaxing music while you're doing your business, and a giant OVO-themed indoor basketball court. Drake's also said that this home includes an Olympic sized indoor pool, but I have yet to see it. Now we've looked at all of Drake's real estate, which definitely seems like a lot. Both his YOLO estate and his Toronto mansion are pretty epic and over the top, I'd say. Which one do you guys think is cooler? I'm not sure if Drake has any other real estate, but he's clearly using a lot of that net worth he's earned to invest. If you guys know of any of Drake's homes that I missed, let me know. Personally, I think his estates are a little too crazy for me, but I do really love that grotto style pool at the Hidden Hills Mansion. Okay guys, now I'll be reading out a few comments from previous videos. On our Kris Jenner before and after vid, Gina No Name Forever said, I enjoy your videos, you're always so kind and positive. Also love the cross you wear in each video, you are beautiful. Thank you Gina, that's such a thoughtful compliment to read, I really appreciate it. On our Kylie Jenner house tour, Miss Blonde said, I'm a minimalist and love small spaces, so this house gives me anxiety. I wonder if I was crazy rich if I'd ever go for a huge house like that. I doubt it. Yeah, Kylie's house is definitely on the huge side. I like the place, but that's a lot of cleaning. And finally, on our Will Smith house tour, Jade Emery said, Love the Smith's home and RV. Thanks for sharing. Anytime, and I'm glad you liked it. Alright guys, that's all I could find on Drake's mansions. Which was your favorite or what parts did you like the best? Let me know in the comments and let me know some other celebrity houses you'd like to see. Follow me on Instagram if you want to chat more and I'll see you next time with some more videos. Bye!